So my conversation with David, the co-founder of Crisp AI, uh, the biggest takeaway that jumped out at me um, was, you know, talking about a deep technology company that had to discover the actual business model and the actual product um, around it. I have a lot of clients that I've dealt with over the years that you know are often sort of technical founders, where they come up with with a a tool or technology or a platform that is really really cool and really sophisticated, uh, and has a broad set of of potential applications, but they struggle to actually take it to market because everything around the technology isn't fully baked or it's too generic or generalized. Um, and so I come from the philosophy of, you know, first starting with understanding your customer, then understanding their set of, you know, the broad range of problems, really diving in and honing in on a specific problem that is a, a, a crucial pain point for them uh, and one that is not well addressed by solutions in the market. And that allows us to discover an opportunity for which we go and design and develop a solution bespoke to them and to that problem. Um, and the way I like to describe it is, you know, we don't want to take a square peg and squeeze it into a round hole. That is what we say. We're searching for product market fit, right? We've built a product. Now we're looking for a market to buy it. But what it really is, product market fit is this complete abstract shape, right? And it's twisty and turny and it has all these crazy edges to it. You couldn't possibly carve a, a solution that would fit perfectly into it. It has to be grown organically from within. So I talk about creating product market fit as opposed to finding product market fit. And so I often deal with and, and work with um, founders who, who take this opposite approach. They build a technology and they say, what market can I shoehorn or cram this thing into? Uh, and, it, and it often doesn't work well. And so what, what David was, was telling us in his story was how they started with this technology and they they and it had a 24 different use cases that they were potentially going after um, and and struggled to really create a viable business model um, until they finally narrowed it down and made some really tough decisions about which customer segment and which use case they were going to go after um, and actually say no to some really viable and compelling alternative uh, segments or use cases. Um, so, for example, we were talking about real-time noise cancellation versus, you know, post-processing. Huge opportunity in post-processing for things like podcasts and YouTube videos and so on. But they said no to that for various strategic reasons to go after this real-time noise canceling market where they felt they could really be uh, a market leader. Um, and so, you know, this is a hard thing for founders to do is to say no to potential opportunities, say no to money on the table. Um, but if you don't, you dilute yourself, you dilute your positioning, you dilute your strategy, you dilute your sales and your marketing, um, you dilute your product offering itself to the point that it actually doesn't end up fitting anybody very well. Um, I also talked about how in today's day and age, every consumer has been trained to expect a high degree of personalization and customization for themselves because we've done it, you know, we've learned it starting with you know, Dell computers back in the day and just in time manufacturing to, you know, our, our highly tuned uh, content feeds and social media. We expect brands to speak directly to us and to have solutions that are highly tailored to, to us and our use cases. Um, and so if you're not going to do it, Guess what? Somebody else will. And even if they have an inferior technology, they're going to beat you in the market because they actually have a business model that is plugged in to that segment and to whatever the channels are to, to market and distribute them. Um, so a superior technology often does not win and in fact loses in many cases when the founders aren't able to, to learn those lessons. So my advice, again, to any technical founders out there who are working on a really interesting deep technology, um, it is, you know, is to not completely give up 
on a grand vision of being an incredibly broad market, but to sequence it and be very um, thoughtful and intentional about the stage in which you are going to go after a particular market segment, a particular use case, and then expand over time and serialize your way to growth as opposed to being uh, highly parallel.